Hey, what's up everyone? Game Dad here, coming at you guys with a new collection series. This is a two-parter, and this time we are taking a look at the Philips CDI, the Compact Disc Interactive. Now, this is a pretty obscure console, and it did not do well commercially, but you know what? There are some pretty good little hidden gems in there. So, come with me as we take a look at all the different games that are on the list for part one today. 1995, All the News and Views was released by Lost Boys in 1993, and this is one of those, like, kind of history in the year of kind of media productions. So it goes through and it just shows you all of the big news topics that happened in the year 1995. So I know most people that are watching these videos probably weren't even alive then, but here you go, 1995. Up next, we have The Seventh Guest, released by Trilobite in 1993, and I actually have this game on CDI and on PC. It was fairly popular on PC, and a buddy of mine, John Riggs, he was actually telling me that the one of the reasons that this didn't come out on other consoles was because of Nintendo's exclusive licensing deal with the CDI, because they had the Super Nintendo CD-ROM coming out. A Great Day at the Races was released by CDI Racing in 1993, and it's kind of like a gambling game with no real stakes. I mean, you're going to the track, you're picking different horses, and you're betting on races. I mean, that's pretty much all this game is, and yeah, I mean, I don't really get it. Up next, we have A Visit to Sesame Street Letters, released by Children's Television Workshop in 1991. And much like many of the games on this console, it was all around like education and kids' games and stuff like that. And this is no different. It teaches you all the different letters. You get to interact with a bunch of the characters on Sesame Street. And, I mean, for what it is, it's actually pretty cool. And it's got some really nice animation to it. And here we have A Visit to Sesame Street Numbers, released by Children's Television Workshop in 1991. And this is the same thing as the letters one, except there's some new characters and stuff like that. And instead of doing letters, you're doing numbers. So it's still a pretty cool game. Uh, my daughter thought it was pretty cool to see Sesame Street characters on the old TV in Daddy's Man Cave. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there you go, Sesame Street. Up next is the Berenstain Bears On Their Own and You On Your Own, released by Philips Interactive Media in 1993. And this one is kind of like an interactive cartoon. I mean, the whole premise of the CDI was that it was interactive, hence the I and all the names. But, I mean, yeah, it, it was pretty neat, actually. I remember this cartoon growing up. I remember all the little books and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool to see this on the console. Up next is Burn Cycle, released by Trip Media in 1994, and this one actually had some pretty cool graphics to it. It was very, you know, 90s, edgy, hacker looking, and overall, I mean, it had some pretty decent 3D graphics for the time. It's definitely, you know, no PlayStation or Saturn or anything like that, but as you can see in the footage, I mean, it's still pretty good looking, even though the interactivity part of this whole console wasn't that great. Up next is Cartoon Jukebox, released by AIM Kidscape Group in 1991, and this is basically like a sing-along DVD for kids, and it's just filled with cartoon and 3D-esque animation, stuff like that, and you just sing along with the different kids. It's all a bunch of like nursery rhyme kind of stuff. So, I mean, my kids like it. Up next is Chaos Control, released by Infogrames in 1995, and this game, it... Again, it has that kind of edgy feel to it, but it was actually kind of fun. You're going around and flying through like a little spaceship and stuff like that, and just kind of, you know, playing through a space shooter kind of game. It was pretty neat to see a game like this on here. Up next is Connect 4, released by Capital Disc Interactive in 1991, and... Just like any digital version of this stinking game, I can never beat the computer. I chose the easiest mode, and it was still whooping my butt. I, I don't know what the deal is. Maybe I'm better at like getting in people's heads when it's real people, but I'm terrible at digital versions of this game. But, I mean, it's Connect 4. It's exactly what you would expect. Up next is The Crayon Factory, released by Philips Sidewalk Studio in 1995. And this one, it's kind of like coming up with mix and match colors. And it's like a digital version of those physical, like, melting pot kind of things you could do with Crayola crowns. 
And, I mean, it, it's pretty cool. You got a bunch of the Crayola characters and stuff uh, in here, or, like, Crayola-esque characters, and very fun and animated. Up next is Earth Command, released by Visionary Media in 1994. And this was another spacey-themed one. And, I mean, it was okay. It was pretty cool, uh, just the concept of it. And the graphics were okay, but this was one where I just couldn't get to really go beyond the menu anytime I would try to record it. It was very rare that it would go beyond the menu. Up next is Flashback, released by Tier Text LTD in 1995. And I feel like I talk about this game constantly because I have it on pretty much every 90s console that I own. And cool game, neat animation style. Uh, there are a few different games that have this kind of style to them, but it's still pretty point and clicky feeling, and I'm not really into that kind of game that much. Up next is Flintstones and Jetsons Time Warp, released by RGA Interactive in 1994. And this is like an interactive version of the Jetsons Flintstones crossover cartoon movie thing that came out. And I remember loving that as a kid. I thought it was awesome. And it's kind of cool to see that on the CDI. Up next is Hotel Mario, released by Philips Fantasy Factory in 1994. And this is one that's actually pretty fun on this game. I mean, the controllers on this console are total crap. But this was actually a pretty cool game. It gave me some very, like, original Super Mario Bros. cartoon kind of vibes. Where really weird proportions and... it. Yeah, the animation is meh, but overall the gameplay was actually pretty fun. Here we have Inca, released by Cocktail Vision in 1993, and couldn't really figure out exactly what this was supposed to be. It is obviously Incan themed, and I guess it's just kind of like a showcase of Incan history, maybe? But, I don't know, it... it was very slow. It was hard to get through the menus to actually get to any gameplay. Up next is International Tennis Open, released by Infogrames in 1993, and this one is two-player. The menus are so boring to navigate through. The coloring is just very bland. This game does not capture my attention well at all. It looks like I'm about to watch some cheesy documentary in school or something like that. And the gameplay is not much better. Up next, we have The Joker's Wild, released by Accent Media Productions in 1993. And I guess this was a game show on TV. I don't remember this growing up. It had to have been a game show in the 90s, so it would have been around the time I would have watched shows like this. But yeah, I don't remember this one. But you're basically just playing a CDI version of the game show. Up next, we have Kether, released by Infogrames in 1993, and I don't get it. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. It's A lot of it is in French, and yeah, I just, I don't get it. I, I don't know what I'm looking at. This was all I was presented with, and I don't understand. Here is Laser Lords, released by Spinnaker Software in 1992. And the intro animation sequence, it, it's kind of cool, like a little car taking off into space and stuff like that. But then you get this weird dressed up character FMV action going on, and it is completely off-putting. Was not interested in playing any longer after that. And here we have Link, The Faces of Evil, released by Animation Magic in 1993. And this may be the last game for this particular video, but next week we will have the continuation of this series and there will be two more Zelda games. Spoiler, they're not great. And the animation is not great. And there you have it, everyone. That is all 21 games for part one of my current Philips CDI collection. Now, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, as well as that little notification bell so you can alert anytime I get a new video coming out. And while you're down there, please leave a comment and let me know what you thought about today's video. Now, as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later.